I know that there's a lot going on with COVID and the whole Chinese spy thing and Google being hacked. And on top of that, the U.S. Treasury being hacked. But I'm not here to talk about that today. Why? Because above all that, wouldn't it be awesome if you could fly? Literally. Now, could it be possible that heaven or what's been described in ancient scriptures and texts and different stories that we would consider to be folklore or just rumors or whatever you want to call it could it in fact be possible that consciousnesses and i know this defies a lot of what is known to be as current science but consciousnesses attract magnetism magnetism not only controls gravity for us to live on but magnetism could be an all encapsulating sort of phenomenon or manifestation of attracting itself towards that of consciousness now when i say consciousness what do i mean by that so i have some notes with me if you could just bear with me very quickly now i wrote this down quick and i say when we speak of heaven is it possible that it's a collective manifestation of multiple consciousnesses and forms that is a subset of the current universe that we live in but is it is a principle in other universes and this might be very very confusing and this will all tie back in a couple minutes just bear with me now could it also be possible that the universe collectively understands that you're not ready to tune into the same frequential vibrations as others which is why when some people pass away when they're not at peace with themselves they don't necessarily move forward so to speak now there have been instances before where interdimensional beings and i spoke about it just in my last episode last friday utilize vibrations to tune into certain dimensions whether it's esoteric realms or different um i guess we could say dimensions if you want to call it harnessing very specific vibrational frequencies that coexist with this universe could it be possible and what the heck does that have to do with being able to fly so could it be possible that when we take a look and we take a step back and say, okay, we look at ancient scriptures and we look at writings and people going to heaven and flying amongst the skies. And I've said this a few times before, but we've established the fact that when they speak about the skies and the heavens and, and God's coming from above or angels coming from above, they're probably speaking about space and extraterrestrials. It's only in every literal sense of the word, it seems to fit even metaphysically in a certain way as well. Now, when we look at that, could we say that some of them actually I guess I don't want to use the word transcended, but vibrated into a certain frequential state where they, in fact, entered another dimension using frequencies and vibrations. Very possible. And to them, they view it as heaven simply because this other dimension may be more peaceful than this one or, or who knows. With that being said, I want to jump right into this. Why are certain pieces of land harnessing gravity in a very different way and harnessing magnetic frequencies and vibrations in very different ways and could it in fact be a gate or a doorway to another universe now you might say okay dave how are you coming up with all these things well i'm not coming up with any of it it's all being cited and it's all here i'll put up some of the articles on screen for you guys right now so to understand what's going on here we first have to establish the fact that there are certain pieces of land that are not marked on any map and in some cases, believe it or not, are so small and condensed they're able to be taken away from maps within the public domain and public resources that harness gravity and magnetism in a way that allows not only for humans to fly, I guess that's a bit of a subset or a bit of a, a side kind of thing that's just cool, but could it in fact be harnessed through the use of technology and spirituality to teleport and for many other things. Now, there's pieces of land all around the world that no one really knows has far less gravity than the rest of the world. No one knows why. Scientists have explained that it's very possible that certain meteors hit certain parts of the earth that literally bent gravity. That is one of many theories, and I think that's the only plausible theory that would be applied here. But what's even more interesting is the fact that the military is covering all of this up. And to say that one military is covering things up is very realistic but then we also have to look at the fact that other world militaries are covering this up in the same manner 
that the other world governments and militaries are within their respective countries. And so when we look at this, we have to say, okay, not that there's some type of one world shadow government at play, although that may, may in fact be legitimately possible. We also have to look at the fact that these military and government organizations are coordinating with one another because they understand what's going on here. Now, that's not to say every single country is communicating with one another. They they keep secrets from each other all the time, and they're very transparent with their advers- uh, with their partners all the time. But at the same time, there comes a point where regardless of what race, country, culture you come from or you live in currently, humanity needs to harness the abilities of being able to ascend vibrationally, spiritually, telepathically, you name it, in order to adapt and I guess we could say in a certain way, excel the human race. Whether you're Chinese, whether you're black, whether you're Latino, whether you're what, it doesn't matter. And I think there's a certain point where those with who've had enough money they understand this and they're not hiding it because they realize we as a people can harness it because we're human just like them they're hiding it because they know that knowledge is power and so even if some of us don't even get to see these pieces of land in person and experience it ourselves just knowing about it is already the problem in and of itself now we then need to understand what anti-gravity is so anti-gravity according to wikipedia is a hypothetical phenomenon of creating a place or object that is free from the force of gravity. It does not refer to the lack of weight under gravity experienced in free fall or orbit, or to balancing the force of gravity with some other force such as electromagnetism or aerodynamic lifts, but it is a reoccurring concept in science fiction, particularly in the context of spacecraft propulsion. So the idea, guys, essentially, anti-gravity would be, I think Bob Lazar explained this perfectly on the Joe Rogan podcast, where he said if you took a bowling ball, and placed it on your bed, and then your bed sheets bend with the bowling ball, literally bend with the bowling ball as um, as the ball rolls. That is exactly how I guess we could say anti gravity or bending gravity or zero energy propulsion would work in a certain sense. And I'll be doing a, an episode more specifically about that later this week. Now, when we move on, what we're going to notice here is that if we take a look at inverse.com, who has a fantastic article about this, what we'll notice here is that the cause of a lot of these electromagnetic, we can call them anomalies, or even spiritual anomalies, are that of vibrations. And the reason why I say this is because places where there is some type of anomalistic electromagnetic energy spike, like Skinwalker Ranch, Area 51, I mean, that's a bit of a different story, but you get the idea, the Navajo land, the, the sacred land of the Skinwalker, all of that stuff has an abnormal UFO sighting. Now, a normal abnormal amount of UFO sightings, my apologies. Now, whether or not we can attribute that to reverse engineered military, just checking the place out and trying to understand it in the same way that you and I are, or whether it's extraterrestrials trying to understand it as well or harness it as a use for teleportation, we don't know. We've seen instances such as the, Bur- the Bermuda Triangle or other instances where UFOs will literally go in- into a certain part of the world geographically that every other human that's tried to go with at least our public technology has completely failed and disappeared. We've seen it all the time, these UFOs going into these places. Now, again, whether or not it's human, military, or extraterrestrial could be a little bit of both. With that being said, according to inverse.com, the cause of the, the bizarre physics discovery, good vibrations, scientists have long known that vibrating a medium like a body of water at just the right frequency can cause strange physical properties to arise. Famously, Russian Nobel laureate and physicist Pyotr Kapitsa, sorry if I butcher the name, discovered in 1951 that applying vibrations to a pendulum could create a secondary stable equilibrium point. Now, I'll I'll explain that in a second. While a normal pendulum swings down from left to right with gravity, Kapitska's vibrating pendulum could do the same, but pointed upwards, seemingly against the force of gravity. End quote. Now, this is, this is insane, and I'll say this because there's so many things here that when we take a step back and we look, we see that there's abnormalities that are being suppressed by institutions that hold major influence over the public domain. And so when I spoke in the beginning of the episode about heaven and things like this, could it be possible that when we look back at our ancestors and how they could not explain things because they just were not there technologically and in an evolutionary state mentally, that this was their form of heaven, understanding that vibrations that can be harnessed at just the right amount of frequential tone 
is actually the gateway to different dimensions. And that is what we would define as heaven. Now, I'm not trying to disrespect any type of religion. I'm not trying to disrespect anyone's belief. All I'm trying to say here is that this may in fact be a possibility. And the fact that not too much information is coming out about this makes it that much more interesting. Now, when we look as well at Wired.com, what we're going to find here is that in 1996, and I quote, Russian emigre scientist Eugene Podkletnov, I apologize if I uh, butchered his name, was about to publish a peer-reviewed article in the respected British Journal of Physics deproving he claimed, or physics D, sorry, proving, he claimed, that gravity could be negated, essentially that it can be um, ignored in a certain way if you harness the technology or the, the, the vibrations that's all around us right now. Then a London newspaper publicized his conclusions and the skeptics had a field day. Everyone knew you couldn't mess with the law of gravity. Einstein himself had said so. Then what ended up happening to the scientist? He withdrew the article. The university he worked at, highly respected scientist, the university evicted him. He retreated from the public eye, end quote. Here's the thing about all that. He was onto something. And so what do you do when someone's onto something? You ridicule them. I've spoken about this many times. You ridicule them in the public eye. You disenfranchise them. You take away any type of reputation or credibility they've had. And even if you need to, you go a step further and you start doing the same type of damage psychologically and unfortunately, possibly physically to that person's family as well. Because again, if they cannot buy you off, if they cannot kill you, because it would become too public, they suppress you. Very, very simple. Not that difficult to understand. We know that already. Now, if we also take a look at what's going on at these exact patches of land that are not even on any type of public map, but are within the, the large pieces of land that we know today to be places like Hudson Bay or Antarctica or things like that, we'll notice that there's military quarantine to a small degree all around these patches of land. Now, how long these patches of land stretch for is nothing crazy. You're talking maybe anywhere from 10 to 50 acres worth of land. Now, that is big, but relative to being able to keep things quiet in the grand scheme of things, both physically, geographically, and through the use of controlling the mainstream media, it's not that difficult to keep quiet. Let's put it that way. Now, when I say humans can fly, the fact that there is an increase in gravity or a decrease in gravity allows humans to fly. So the idea is that essentially, for example, if any of you have seen, I forgot what the movie's called off the top of my head. Anyways, the, the movie, I'll, I'll pull it up on the screen for you guys shortly after when I'm editing this. But long story short, he went to Mars and this character was able to essentially have the ability to jump very substantially very more strongly than that of the aliens on Mars. Now, okay, we might say, okay, that, that's just a movie, Dave. But the whole idea, guys, is to show you that if there were, for example, an increase in gravity or decrease or any type of fluctuation, it, it essentially we'd be able to fly if there was enough of that. Now, again, I'm not a scientist. I don't know the specifics of it, but the idea behind it is that this is in fact possible. And people have witnessed this. For example, if we take a look at the Flying Mothman of Chernobyl, there is evidence to suggest that this is actually one of the areas where human flight in a certain way through the utilization of gravity being harnessed or unharnessed in a certain way is being tested there. And so these sightings may in fact be of humans disguised as other, I guess we can call them beings or something like this, in order to create lore or a folklore type of rumor that turns into a broken telephone type of form of communication so that when people hear the story or see the pictures, they think, no, that's just a bunch of BS. You know, the camera's messing with you, the angle's off, he, th that thing is too far up in the sky, it could easily be a bird, who knows. And if you don't even have a picture, if you tell your friends what you saw, they think you're crazy. And so when you look at this and when you guys, and I'm speaking to you guys as if you guys, I'm one-on-one -on -one with you in the exact same room as you guys. When we look at this, would you guys really put it past any type of military institution, intelligence agency, government, black budget program, what have you, what you name it, would you put it past any of them to do this and, tr and literally, no word of a lie, dress some of these soldiers up while they're testing these patches, uh, they're testing this type of flight, natural flight over these patches of land to be dressed up as some type of ridiculous humanoid bird or something like this in order to I guess we could say ridicule themselves in plain sight in case they are spotted. 
I wouldn't rule it out. And what's interesting here too, is if we look at express.co.uk, and I quote, for more than 40 years, experts were baffled by an anti-gravity zone surrounding the Hudson Bay area in Canada, with some conspiracy theorists even claiming the spot might be a portal into another dimension, end quote. Again, it's locked off. You can't go there now. I live in Toronto. I live in Canada myself. I'd be more than happy to go. I've tried to uh, arrange schedules and, and to book to go. I tried just yesterday. Impossible. You can't do it. They don't even in acknowledge that this piece of land exists. So believe me when I tell you guys I've tried, and I would encourage you guys to try too if any guys live around there. But what I'm trying to say here is that this is extremely abnormal. And what we can also attribute this to, by the way, is the possibility that teleportation may in fact be the only goal here. The fact that harnessing gravity in one way or another can, I guess we could say, manipulate the way in which humans can harness their own body weight and fly, I mean, it's pretty neat. It's certainly something that it could be used if you can increase or decrease gravity in certain areas and weaponize it, which is probably something the military is doing. They're not just going to strap a silly suit on a soldier and then say, oh, try it out and see what happens. Very, very unlikely. So... When we look at all of this, what we're going to notice here is that, yes, does this defy traditional science or what we now know to be in the public domain and the public discourse of scientific and the STEM community to be something preposterous? Absolutely. Right now, it's considered pseudoscience. But again, based on everything this channel has covered, I think we can confidently say this is not pseudoscience by any stretch of the imagination. So please let me know what you guys think. I know there's a lot going on in the world right now, and I'm not blind and I'm not naive to it. But again, maybe this is just something that I thought would give you guys a bit of a, 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 a breath of fresh air, so to speak, covering something that doesn't have to do with the COVID or China or anything like that. But of course, we'll, we're going to be covering all of that as the uh, as the days come. So let me know what you guys think, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you.